Today we have a broadhead I wanted to get to last year. This is a lot of bang for your buck, and I think the performance is going to be insane. I think this sells a lot after this test, but what we're here to find out is, is the performance as good? You can see there's six of them in here, a ton of extra bleeders. 1% goes to con well, conservation. It's built for big game. Let's get to it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so today we have, actually, I should probably go like this. Let's get two like that. I guess. Today we have the Cayuga Broadheads. These are the Pilot Cut 125 grain Gen 2. Uh, they also, well, I'll show you in a second. You can use the extra bleeder blades or you can fill that gap and use it as a two blade single bevel. Uh, just some stats from the back. Aerodynamic design, full stainless steel construction, three to one ratio at front. Solid one piece, which is really good. That means it's durable. Single bevel, true 46 to 48 Rockwell hardness should hold up and field point accuracy. Now, I've seen a lot of posts on this. Um, never really seen too many tests on it. Actually, I see John Lusk just did a test on it. I was really trying to get to this last year, but we ran out of time. Uh, it's actually kind of like these broadheads here. We never got to them. Uh, Actually, we might have got to that one. I can't remember. I think we did. Today, we finally can test it. So what we're gonna do is, I, you've, if you've been watching, I have the new Gold Tip Force FOCs. Okay, so you can see the two offerings here in the light. You have the one on the right is with the gap filled as just a two blade. And then you also have the single bevel bleeder add-on that comes supplied. We did weigh these, which we will in a second, but you can see the design of them. I mean, you have a really nice tonneau tip. So you can see the distance from cutting point to the, the blades or the front of the bleeder blade. That should help on angled shots with penetration. Uh, also, it's going to aid in penetration by itself. But we're going to shoot both of these in the gel with, and with the bleeder blades and with the regular uh, just two blade design. So the arrows we're gonna be using, I'm gonna use them the same. I have the 100 grain insert for these, so this will be 225 grains up front. Uh, we're gonna weigh them just so we have an actual weight, and we won't have the overhead camera for this test, but so the option with just without the bleeder blade just filled is 541 grains. And I would expect that this one would be a little heavier having the bleeder blades. It's just more steel. Yep, it's at 545. So if you wanted to have these in your quiver at, with both options, depending on what you're hunting, you're only talking four grains of difference. So you're not, you're not adding a ton of weight to add that bleeder, which is nice. So 545 with the bleeders, 541 with, with it filled. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take and uh, we'll shoot the heavier one through the lab radar and the target down there. Uh, I'm guessing it's gonna be about 275 feet per second, but that's what we have the lab radar for. We can actually know exactly what our speeds are for this test. So let's get to that part now. All right, so the lab radar, I gotta put in 545. Um, I'm not really too worried about five grains or four grains of difference between the two for the speed. Uh, so I'm not, I'm just gonna set to the heavy and then it'll just be a touch faster, if, if even a foot per second faster. So I'm not worried about that. We have it armed right now. I don't have a release. You wanna to toss me a release center pocket? Give her a toss. Whew. So now we're armed. We'll take the first shot. I'm guessing 274, 275 is what we're gonna be. Uh, it's a Matthews Tri-X with wake limbs, 80 pound draw probably. It's 83 peak, what's what it's set at, but I need new strings, so it's probably around 80 pounds. Let's see. We'll shoot the sever target down there. Man, that flies good. 269. That's probably about right. It's a little heavier than the other one that we tried. We'll shoot one more. All right, so we're arming it again. Now we'll shoot it. I'm just gonna do this for flight purposes, see if there's any difference between the bleeder blade or just filled as a two blade. 
once again, the four grain difference, I'm not worried about it. Flies dead true. One. That's what we'll need, 270. They both fly like darts though. I aimed right to the right of that one. Flew dead true, there's no difference in flight at least uh, in these two shots. Now we do not do accuracy tests. We, uh, are you recording? I am. Okay. We do not do accuracy tests because there's too much human error uh, involved in that. So until we can get a hooter shooter, which I don't have 2,500 or 2,800, how much it is, uh, we won't be doing accuracy tests because I'm not an Olympic archer. I'm a bow hunter. I have human error and I'm very okay with admitting that. To blame the broadhead for human error is just not how we do things. We do things, no BS, performance talks. If you have variables that are not controlled, it's not a test. So for all you guys asking if you, you know, we do accuracy tests, we don't. I mean, we do per se, but we don't film it because it's not a true test. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go get my arrows. We know the weight. We know they fly great. That rhymed. And we're going to hammer some gel. Let's get to it. All right, so we have the Cayuga. Uh, right now we have just the two blade, no bleeder, just filled in. 541 grains, uh, going 270. So we're at 20 yards, camera's rolling down there on that FBI ballistics shells, 20%. So let's see if we can hit it and see what this does in that gel. Good. That, that, those fly amazing. Those are, I like those. Okay, so now bleeder. I'm gonna just try to put it to the right of it, maybe a little bit higher so we can really see, but these things just fly like, oh man, they fly good. So let's see, 20 yards, ballistic shell, same specs, you, uh, you know the weight. It's 545 on this, four whopping grains. Perfect. I wasn't square to the gel. <laughs> be all right. It's going to have an interesting wound channel. The, the gel moved, so I wasn't perfectly square, and I didn't think about it till after it hit. So if it looked cockeye, that's why. But we should be able to see visibly both wound channels pretty good where they're placed, and then I can put the other broadhead on the backside. Hammer them out. Let's go. All right, guys, so we shot both offerings from Cayuga. These, they're like 50 bucks for six of these heads. And look at this. This is ungodly, okay? This is 16 inches long of ballistics gel, right? We are, like the bottom one without the bleeder did get further and has insane rotation. To see that much rotation in this gel, which is extremely dense, is just, oh man, the spin this would have in a whitetail, whew. And to get damn near 14 inches in the gel, man, that, that this is that wound channel is lights out, ex insane twist. And with the bleeder blades, in a white tail, the bleeder blades are not going to slow down the rotation. In this gel, guys, I, this is 17 pounds of gel. Okay, 17 pounds. For reference, that block target weighs 17 pounds. And that's 18 by 18 by 16 and just full. This thing is extremely dense. The bleeder blades and gel will slow down rotation. But you can see here, you still have really good twist rate in this gel. And you have insane penetration with an awesome wound channel. Whew, I, I wanted to get to these broadheads last year, but by the time I got them, uh, it was too late, it was too cold. This is why, I mean, these things are insane. This is insane performance. I mean, this is really deep penetration in this. In a whitetail, you're talking savage wound channel, insane spin, heavy duty broadheads. This might be on my arrow for opening day. I mean, I, I think I would just keep the bleeder blade because in a whitetail, you're not gonna sacrifice anything. You're gonna just zip up a little bit more of a wound channel, but Let's look at the entry cut. So actually, before we do that, 
just look how quick it started rotating oh, yeah, it was... in this ballistic shell. It was on impact. It started spiraling. I think it's just because of that design. That that design is lethal. Now, guys, these are designed for big game, like Safari, Australia. Uh, so whitetail should be no match, and I really don't think they will be. But you can see this bullet hole right here. You can see the twist rate already started. Is it focused? Yeah. You can see it started as soon as it hit, taking some gel in with it, putting in a big old hole. The bleeders did their job, and it started twisting. Without the bleeders, you can see another solid gash, and it, it just it started rotating as soon as it hit, and that's just. I think I'd leave the bleeder veins or the bleeders in there. I agree. I agree because in a whitetail, you're you're talking, you're gonna get insane performance because in this gel, it's gonna slow it down a little bit, but you didn't lose much even in this. That and I like the fact on the bleeders, you're gonna have an extra cut on there instead of just a slit. Yeah, could seal up. You can zip it open. I do. I agree with Moose. I think the way I'd hunt this, you you don't lose anything really in the gel, which is surprising because anything you have more mass in this stuff, or anything to offset, as you can see, the twist rate in the that's one of the best twist rates we've seen is that non bleeder Cayuga. That and I think it's all because of that design. It's just. That tip is hidden and starts spinning before there's any more resistance from your, your actual cut. It's a genius design. And it's tough. And I mean, like I said, it's for big game. So whitetail, the old North American doe is going to get it. The what tail? She ain't going to be munching on clover, though. She's going to be munching on her kerns. We're going to be in the oak flat. Done. Oh man, it just looks so cool when you get them nice twisted out. Oh wow, they're real sharp. I gotta say, these might be wow. Jesus, dude. I gotta say, these are some of the sharper broadheads I've seen yeah, outside. All these ones that say razor sharp. These are sharp, sharp. Those ones are sharp. Yeah. And I, you can see now with the sun glistening upon the wound channel, they're savage. Either way you want to go, if you want to go. Uh, with the bleeder, as I would, or without the bleeder, you can't go wrong. And these things are, either way you want to hunt this broadhead, I mean, you have choices. Um, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. This is one of the better tests we've seen in ballistics gel by a lot. I mean, this thing, the twist rate this performed in this gel is just unheard of. I mean, there's only been a couple broadheads that have been there, and it's actually... Drop a comment if you can guess what they are. I'm not going to say, but you probably won't because it shocked us. But I got to say, I, this is what I expected from these. God, they're shiny. I mean, you can see the sharp lines from when they sharpen them because they pre-sharpen every pack by hand. And you can see the grain in it. Man, I, I'm blown away. i absolutely blown away. So I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this is the setup. I'm going to be shooting opening day. 545 grains, 225 up front, 125 grain, Cayuga, two blade with the bleeders, which are also single bevel. But I mean, this is not shabby either, but I agree with Moose. I think the bleeders just make sense. You're not losing anything in a whitetail, in gel you will. But either way, this broadhead, it was insanely, insanely uh, impressive in our testing. We are going to shoot these in shoulder blades. We do have some coming. Uh, also, we're going to bring out the car hood again and shoot a lot of broadheads into the car hood and then test a shoulder blade, a broadhead through that, and a broadhead through the car hood. See if it's a relative test. Therefore, we can just shoot the car hood, which I think it's going to be. Um, people really are overestimating that car hood. It's just pretty thin metal. It's not much. I actually think a shoulder blade would be a little bit worse. but. Guys, we got a ton of testing to do. We got a ton coming. Hunting season's wrapping up for early season goose. We got bow season starting, then duck hunting, then goose opens back up. So it's busy season, baby. As always, smash the thumbs up button for your boys. Drop your comments below. Let us know what opening day setup you're taking a field, what you thought of these. If you're interested in these, I will put a link down below to them. Uh, it'll probably be their website. I doubt they're on Amazon. Uh, but I highly recommend these. These things are... That, that design is just, it's kind of like the Shuttle T. 
it's just a it's mean. This would be a good elk arrow. This would be good for anything. I mean, they kill cape buffaloes with these things. But as always, if you want to support the channel, we do all this, we buy all this, all this right here. There's a lot of money just right here. Uh, the Patreon link and YouTube memberships is down below. Or if you want to support our channel through buying merch, that's also right down below. All those ways help us keep these tests and no BS honest performance talks. The rest walks as it always should be and as always will be on BCO. It's just, it's really hard to fund it. We're trying to get to as much as we can, but times are tough right now. Thanks to old Biden. But anyways, Jake Slaysman, Blue Cowder Outdoors, got Moose behind the camera, which I didn't even notice till now. He's repping the old BCO hoodie. Looks good. Looks good. Anyways, we got another broadhead to shoot. His hand's probably getting tired from holding the camera. It sucks. He's over here back. Looks like a gobbler looking over a ridge, know what I'm saying? Anyways, we'll catch you on the next one. Take her easy. That's freaking nuts, dude.